Hello, Ken Weller, New Tech Inventors. Today we're down here at the assembly area and as you can see we've been doing a lot of electronics work lately. We're 3D printing our boxes and our different panels and so forth for these electrical components. Then we're installing the components on them and then we're doing the electrical wiring, wiring them up. So these are all parts for the battery backup system for the 3D printers. In my case it's mainly for the ANET A8 Plus printers. We're printing on a 300 by 300 surface and we either print a large quantity of parts on those printers when we run them or we print larger parts. Either way they run 24 hours or more so when you're running a printer for a long period of time 24 48 hours 72 hours whatever you run the risk of having some kind of a failure either in a power fluctuation or a filament break or whatever and with these printers even if we have resumed print it doesn't guarantee that your print's going to be salvageable because if the power's off for more than about 15 20 minutes on my printers the glass beds lose adhesion and when the power comes back on you can resume print but you're going to lose adhesion and destroy the print anyway so that's why we've come up with the battery backup system for ourselves but at the same time we thought some other people might be able to use the same system so we've developed it into a product that could be marketed. Now there are three major components. One, there's the main battery control unit that has a, basically a voltmeter, amp meter. These will work on 12 or 24 volt systems. And on these panels, this one can handle up to 10 different printers and then they have individual fuses that go in here for each printer. We're fusing our A-nets at 10 amps because that's about the maximum they draw. When they're printing the bed draws the majority of the heat and uh, power and we're looking at about 7 amps max. It fluctuates between 2 to 7 amps intermittent so as you can see this is a 50 amp meter so this one's set up to handle 50 amps and that's distributed to the different printers when you're running multiple printers the printers when they're drawing 2 to 7 amps in our case the ANET A8 Plus draws about 7 amps for about 3 seconds and then it draws only two amps for about 10 or 12 seconds. So the duty cycle is more like about four or five amps. So if you're running a number of these printers, you can pretty much count on about four or five amps, let's say five amps being drawn at a time. So even with a 50 amp system, set up here we could potentially run 10 printers simultaneously on a 50 amp system but we also have these 100 amp systems that have 12 terminals they go up to 100 amps and with those you can run more printers and printers that draw more than the average 5 amps that we're talking about with the A8 Plus. And other thing that we have is this distributes the power for each printer and monitors and has a main cutoff switch here where you can cut all the DC power on and off and it individually fuses each output going to each printer. Now each 
printer has a panel similar to this that has an on off switch and a volt amp meter that will read up to 10 amps and this also has a relay which can handle more than the 10 amps and this relay plugs into this socket and the relay is what switches from power supply 24 volts to the battery 24 volts when there's a power failure and if you watched a previous video you saw where we tested this out and everything works great so each printer will have to have one of these little slave units wired up to it and that's what my grandson Tanner is doing over here right. he's cutting all of the wires and putting connectors on each end of them and getting them all ready to wire up these slave units so that's why we have all these different wires different gauges of wire this is a standard length of wire American wire gauge chart that shows what gauge wire you need for different things now we can get by with 18 gauge wire all the way up to about 30 amps if we're less than three feet in length which all of these little jumpers on here are now we're not running a lot of power through these because they're just going to the meters and operating the meters so we use 18 gauge there but then when we're going to the printer you could be running 15, 20, 25 feet. So we're running 16 gauge wire. And if you can see out here our maximum 10 amps, we can go up to 20 feet on that 16 gauge wire. So we're using 16 gauge here. And we have a couple of printers that will be farther away. They won't be in the rack with the ANET A8s but there'll be some Tronic CXY2 Pros that we want to have on battery backup. They're going to be a little farther away. They're going to be about 25 to 30 feet. So we're going to run 12 gauge wire. And at 10 amps, all we need is 14 gauge for 25 feet. So the 12 gauge will be more than enough for our 25 to 30 feet that we run for them. So anyway, that's a little bit about what we've been doing and trying to get all of these ready. We also have one other component. We 3D print this piece right here and make this copper link or connector. And then we have a small 50 amp fuse and a terminal and what we do we just slip this on our battery and tighten the nut down and then we take the wire that's going to our control panel over there and hook it up to this terminal right here that gives us a 50 amp fuse right at the battery so if anything should happen to short out on any of these connections where we're bringing in the power and so forth we have a safety fuse there then once we come out of this panel every wire with power on it coming out has its individual fuse and with those individual fuses we can select how many amps we want for each printer and put in the appropriate fuse in here and then that fuse is the power going out this wire to this specific printer and then you just keep adding fuses with the appropriate amperage that you want to protect that printer from and you can have a 5 amp, you can have a 
7, 8, 10 amp, whatever. We're doing mostly 10 amps since we're pulling a little bit over 8 amps. We figure if anything goes awry on the printer where it jumps up to 10 amps, we want to shut down the power to it, at least the power coming from the batteries so that we don't damage the printer. So a lot of safety features put in here at different points. So that's what I wanted to show you for today. We also have a lot of other projects going on and we'll try to show you a little bit of that when we're working on them here in the next few days. So until the next time, happy printing from New Tech Inventors.